Well, Canadian headline inflation cooled to 3.1% in October, just sitting above that target range for the Bank of Canada. So, is it safe now to say that our central bank's hiking cycle is finished? Joining us now to discuss, Robert Both, Mark Macro Strategist with TD Securities. Uh, Robert, great to have you on the program. Uh, let's start with what we've got out of the inflation print today. 3.1% is the headline. Uh, what, what did you find interesting? Um, so, as you mentioned, um, we are just sitting right above the, the target range now. So that 0.7 uh, percentage point drop, that is, you know, a lot of uh, good news for, um, for Canadians that are struggling with a higher cost of living. It's also great news for the Bank of Canada because inflation is that much closer to their end goal. Um, now, as with every CPI report, there are a lot of moving pieces under the headline number. Um, and in this one, it, um, it, we saw a very stark divergence between energy prices and shelter prices. So energy prices were the main downward force in um, October. Gasoline prices fell by about 6.4% on the month. Um, you also had a drag from electricity and heating fuels. Um, so when you strip some of that out, the headline numbers look a little bit um, less positive. Um, we also saw more pressure come through the, the shelter channel in October. So, um, you know, that is going to be something that's a, a little tougher to digest for those households um, that are uh, a little more financially stretched. Um, you know, rents have been a, a key driver of CPI for the last uh, several months, but those um, accelerated further in October. Um, rents saw their largest month over month increase in, in a few decades. So that is uh, certainly something that um, speaks to the shortages uh, across the housing market. Um, we also saw more pressure come through uh, mortgage interest costs, um, through property taxes as well, saw a much larger increase than they had last year. Uh, so you're really seeing a, a bit of a, a gap open up between um, shelter prices and the broader CPI basket. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that stood out to me today, though, was the improvement we saw for the Bank of Canada's core inflation measures. Um, those had been running at about 3.8% year over year in October, uh, or in September. In October, they're sitting around 3.55%. And the Bank of Canada has been uh, keenly focused on the three month rates of core inflation. And those have been uh, in a, maintaining a very tight range over the last 12 months, but we actually saw them break below that range in October. Um, they ha those three month rates of core inflation were running at 3.7% in September. Uh, they're now at 3.0%, which is uh, just the, the upper end of the Bank of Canada's um, target range. So we are going to need to see a, a couple more months of this to, to really make this a trend, um, but it, it should give the bank a, a little more confidence that um, its tight policy stance is helping to relieve price pressures and that inflation does still remain on a path to 2%. Because I think we're not that far away. Right? December 6th, I, I had forgotten that December was right around the corner. We're going to get another rate decision from the Bank of Canada. It seems like a funny time because when you think about it, like, are they on hold or this? is like, well, the, our central bank, the states, they haven't done anything since the summer. But after what we've been through, we're all pretty much on edge as to what do they do next? What do you think we get? What's the message from December the 6th? First, what are they going to do about rates? So we don't expect uh, the Bank of Canada to uh, cut rates um, until the middle part of next year. Um, and I think for December, there is a pretty high bar for any sort of um, change in tone or, or signal that you know, rate cuts might be a, a little bit closer. Um, the bank has actually been more focused on the risk of hikes over the last few months, really since July. Um, you know, they haven't uh, done much, but they have kept that threat of hikes on the table and that's helped to keep financial conditions tight. Um, we expect that message to remain unchanged in December. Uh, the bank does need to see uh, more progress on the inflation front to, um, to take the risk of hikes off the table. But we think with a, a couple more months um, of softer core inflation, and if we continue to see progress on the headline front as well, um, we are getting a little bit closer to when you can expect that, uh, that change in tone from the bank. Is sort of part of the sort of uh, issue now for the Bank of Canada, not so much the data that they see coming in, because it all seems to be moving in the direction they would hope it would move in after being so aggressive with rate hikes, but how we start reacting to things. I just think back to the spring when, you know, they, they said, oh, we're going to stop here and see what kind of, you know, effect we've had on the economy, and the housing market took off again. And then they came back to the table in the summer and hiked some more. That really cooled things down. Are they worried about how we're going to react in the short term to small shifts? 
Right. So I, I think the bank is very aware of how its communication is um, interpreted by, by markets, uh, by uh, the broader financial community. And that is part of the desire to, to keep financial conditions uh, tight, to keep the risk of hikes on the table until they are much closer to easing, until they have more evidence that um, you know, this isn't just a, a one-off um, like we saw last spring. Um, this is you know, a, a firmer trend towards 2% uh, inflation in a balanced economy. Um, I think that the biggest difference is between you know, what we saw in January and, and where we are today is just the, the broader state of the economy. Back in um, the early parts of this year, labor markets were still very tight. Um, we were still in a state of excess demand. Um, you know, we've seen two very weak quarters of uh, GDP growth now. You know, the Canadian economy contracted in the second quarter. Um, it looks like it, its growth has remained pretty flat over Q3 as well. And you're starting to see that excess supply creep back into uh, the economy. Um, so I think there, the bank still doesn't want to, you know, tip its hand until it is uh, certain that, you know, cuts are um, on the horizon. But we, uh, with a, a couple more um, data prints, and if we do see more progress on those core inflation measures, um, you know, we could be getting closer to that uh, point in the new year. How does the new year look in terms of the economy, in terms of jobs? I mean, I think this has been, uh, it's been a very aggressive hiking cycle. I think perhaps uh, some of the effects of the rate uh, hikes took a little longer to work through the economy. Is next year when we sort of receive the full impact of what they've done? Um, so it is going to remain a, a very uh, challenging environment for growth over 2024. Um, I, I think the, the bigger source of uncertainty is, you know, what's happened to the economy in Q3 and Q4 of this year coming off that uh, contraction in the second quarter. We do expect things to, to stabilize over Q4. We do expect to see a return to uh, low but positive growth. Um, and over the course of 2024, we should get closer to those uh, trend-like uh, GDP numbers. Um, that does mean excess supply is going to continue building over the course of next year. Um, and we don't, um, well, we'll also see a bit of a, um, a bit of a, a tailwind when the Bank of Canada does begin to ease off of its restrictive policy stance over the second half of uh, the year. Now, population growth is still um, continuing to provide a key driver of GDP growth. So that is going to keep us from tipping into a, uh, a steeper slowdown. Um, so we look for GDP growth of 0.9% next year. Um, we think with that population growth, you are still going to continue to see a job growth throughout the year. But job growth will continue to be outpaced by the growth of the labor force. So we can see unemployment rate uh, move higher as the economy moves further into excess supply. But we don't expect the type of material job losses that um, you might anticipate with a weaker growth outlook.